Hey, everybody. Carl Schilling here again with you today. I'm so happy to be here with you. And today we're going over module four. You know, we've been through three modules of training so far. And, and all of this is about becoming a financial concierge. And, and uh, it doesn't change anything other than your title. It, it really doesn't. It's not a title on a card or any of that kind of thing either, okay? It's a, it's a mindset. Being a financial concierge is truly a mindset. It's what your value proposition is all about. Remember, in the, the three golden rules, you have to have an impenetrable value proposition. This is it. This is the value proposition. So today in module four, we're going to discuss the professional levels, okay, which is very important to you as a financial concierge. Again, it goes back to the positioning. The message is the positioning. You know, that's the first training module. And then we're coming down into the principles. And now we're getting to the point where we want to talk about the professional status. You know, what is it you want to, uh, um, what is it you're going to present? And how is that best going to work for you? Okay, so let's, let's share the screen um, and get to... Um, that part of the module, okay? So we are going to talk today about the uh, professional, there's two, three, okay, professional levels. Now again, as with everything that we discuss, uh, it's very important as a financial concierge and anybody around you, you want to have an open mind, be coachable, be committed and be persistent, okay? And if you notice, everything that we do is about, it's learn, earn, teach, each, expand, okay? That should be reach, by the way. Learn, earn, teach, and reach and expand. So I just noticed a little bit of a, an editing issue right there. So, all right, let's look at the four levels of professional status, all right? Now, as a financial concierge, you're a professional. And I'm not saying that, uh, people in our industry are not totally professionals. A, a lot of people think they're a professional, but they don't behave like one. They don't take the actions of a professional, and they certainly in their mind don't consider themselves a professional, okay? Because again, being a professional is a mindset, okay? You don't see many doctors who show up even in their own office. You don't see a doctor show up uh, in a different, um, uh, you know, dressed maybe improperly for what he's going to do that day. The doctor is pretty consistently in his whites and he shows up and he has an authority because he's in whites and people treat the doctor because he's an authority. They give him that automatic credibility. Now, a lot of it has to do with him wearing white, that automatic credibility. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of psychological, social psychological studies have been, have shown. You can put an auto mechanic in a, in a doctor's whites and put him in an office and people go in and they think it's a doctor. So who you are oftentimes is not as eminent as how you project yourself. So being part of a professional is to project yourself and have, you know, have a good deal of uh, depth, no knowledge about what you do. And, and be able to communicate that, okay? But let's look at the four levels of professional status. The four levels are this. The first level is generalist. The second level is specialist. The third level is authority. And the last level, which we, we don't go into too deeply because we have no control over it, is celebrity, okay? That's the highest level. It's the highest status of it is a level of professionalism is to be a celebrity at that point, okay? So, we don't really work with generalists. I don't want to. It's not that I don't like generalists. I love them. They're great. They're wonderful. But here's the th situation. <clears throat> situation. As a financial concierge, you, you can't afford to be a generalist. It's, you don't need to be a financial concierge if you're going to be a generalist. You just don't need to do it. Okay? But here's the thing. Generalists are the lowest paid status for, of any professional. Generalists in the medical field, generalists in the law field, generalists in, in any of the fields are the lowest paid professionals in that field because they're a generalist. Because in the theory, here's what a generalist really is. You're all things to all people and you're absolutely and actually nothing to anyone. Okay? <clears throat> it's the throw it on the wall concept that anybody will do. That's not a real great professional status. Okay? So a generalist 
is the lowest paid status for any professional. And let's look at our, our industry. In this industry, the bottom 10% of earners have a ceiling. Their income ceiling, this is the most they earn, is $27,000 annually. And um, the median income across the whole universe of insurance agents, over 1.1 million of them, the median income is $48,000 annually. So generalists are in the range of zero to $48,000. And, and, tr uh, and trust me, they don't reach the median income that often either. Higher percentage of them are below the median income. Okay, but that's the income for a generalist. Now, specialists earn two to two and a half times more, even three times more than a generalist. Okay, that's by being a specialist. Now, in the insurance industry, the top quintile are specialists and authorities. So the top 25% are specialists and authorities. Authorities earn two to four times more than specialists. Now that level in, the, in our industry, that level is the top 10% of the people in our, in our industry, the top 10% are people who have a floor, income floor of $128,000 a year, meaning the least they earn is one twenty-eight dollars a year. That's the floor for the top 10% in our industry. So, again, let's wrap this up with the fact that a financial concierge like yourself is never a generalist. We don't coach you that way. We don't train you that way. We don't teach anything for you to become a generalist, okay? All financial concierges are trained and coached, right, to be authority specialists and grow into becoming an authority. The minimum income, your standard minimum income should be $100,000, Six figures should be your standard, okay? Now, that fourth level of celebrity uh, is beyond any of our control, okay? So only 2% in any industry achieve this status, and that's wonderful. If you get there, you get there, but it's not something that we could train and develop. You know, there are, there are certain things you can do to increase your, your status of authority, and that's important. But you really can't control or buy your way into celebrity, okay? Um, and maybe you could, but it would take uh, quite a bit of money. Okay, so here's, here's what I want to share with you, why specialists have a great deal of advantage over everybody else, okay? Right? So as you notice, at the bottom level, uh, everything is branding, marketing, and selling. I mean, that's what we do, right? We brand, we market, we sell. And part of that in branding and marketing comes from prospecting. Now, in our industry, far too many people have learned and been taught that somehow prospecting is marketing, and it's not. Marketing is a tool that you would use to prospect. So marketing is an activity, okay? Prospecting is a lifeline. So uh, presenting and selling go hand in hand. You're presenting and you're selling, and the, the top, you notice that 80% of all sales are made after the fifth contact, okay? So uh, only, um, only uh, I think it's um, only 8% of salespeople make more than three contacts, something of that nature, okay? Uh, so basically you can see why the top 8% are rainmakers and you can see why the top 10% earn over 90% of all of the income, all right? Because they follow up. So that's a big thing in our, in our thing. So, but as a specialist, here's the deal you get to identify the kind of client you're looking for. So it's a pretty well ta targeted market. And because it's a targeted or niche kind of market, you have improved market penetration because you don't have to penetrate 150 million people. You may only be penetrating 2 million people, okay, or a million people. So this is going to reduce your marketing course because you don't have to fly crap onto the wall and, and, and try to market to everybody. You only market to the selected primary market you're looking to develop in. And the reason for that, again, is so you separate yourself from everybody else. When you have a niche market and you are reaching out to a select audience, that audience is going to become familiar that you know more than the average person who just reaches out to them willy-nilly because they threw them in a pool with everybody else. You understand that? Okay. So 
you're also going to be able to develop a 100% referral practice because when you do this and you target the right niche markets with people, they're going to talk to others who have the same circumstances they have, and they're going to help you by turning you into an advocate for them. So that is important. That's how you develop a 100% referral practice. And by the way, one of our training modules is the referral of a lifetime where we basically show you how to make this happen. Okay, your brand recognition, as I just mentioned, is much improved because, again, you're in a niche market where people start to know who you are. They start to hear about you. They start to understand. You're writing some blogs. You're putting some social media out. You're putting out some information that we have built for you, the things we've done for you. All you got to do is follow up and put it out there. Okay? And more than likely... And most importantly, you're going to have much improved client relationships with far greater retention. Okay, when you have more than five transactional lines of business or something that you've done for a client, you have over a a 90% retention rate for seven years. That is a tremendously improved lifetime value of a client. Okay, and very few people in our field reach that because they don't use the power of cross-selling and they don't build the multiple lines of business and transactions in the relationship. So that's what we do. Okay, now we are going to support your full success as a specialist because we are going to give you branding, marketing, prospecting, sales concepts and systems and, and a lot more, as you can see with the virtual platform and everything else. Okay, so it's very important that you uh, uh, understand that being a specialist is far superior to being a generalist. And the, the move from specialist to authority could be a very short window of time. It's not a massive leap. In fact, many times, some people can jump right into the level of authority depending on how much um, uh, self-improvement, self-study, things they've done. How much are they bringing to the table in their value proposition so they can jump into authority really quickly. They just haven't understood how to present themselves as an authority, how to market and get themselves out so that people recognize that they're an authority. You're not going to become an authority or a specialist without people recognizing that you're there okay it's a recognition issue but there are ways to kickstart that recognition more so than ever I started in this business back in the 1982 I believe somewhere in there could have been late 81 but I got to tell you when I started in this business I started with Prudential okay I got a job with Prudential and uh, they paid me $300 a week for the first uh, cycle Okay, that money would go in a pool. They pay you three hundred a week. You were you were guaranteed the three hundred a week uh, for fifteen weeks. But during the fifteen week cycle, you were you were putting commissions into the pool, and ultimately your salary would uh, would go up. And 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 then ultimately at that cycle, you'd start to still get some uh, extra bonuses and this that and the other. But you wouldn't have a fixed income, right? So in that in that uh, stage. I worked in an office that had steel, steel, uh, you know, the steel desks, right? Remember those old steel desks, the gray ones, right? They were pretty, uh, pretty nasty when you think of it, right? Um, we didn't even yet, it was still a rotary phone, still a rotary phone. In fact, uh, within a year of me being there, the biggest technological advancement within that first year was the Merlin phone system. Remember the touchstone? Touchstone, and uh, you could touch the buttons and the Merlin. Okay, oh, that was that was massive technology shift. That was like unbelievable. The change from going to a rotary phone to going to a touchstone phone, just for the time it took to dial a number, touchstone versus rotary. Okay, so anyway, that gives you a little kind of a, a, an impact. So here's how we prospected. This was it. So we go in a little room. And uh, you'd have some videos, and the videos you'd pop in, and those videos were the old-fashioned, you know, pop it in there deal, right? The VH, uh, VHS, the big tape, pop it in. You'd watch a presentation. 
they'd have a sales guy, you know, an actor, and then they'd be going through this and they would, oh, blah, blah, blah. You say this, they say that, you say this, they say that, whatever. That's training. And then you're out to the telephone with a, with a uh, crisscross directory. So at Prudential, you had a, uh, you had a small uh, uh, book of business because that book of business was basically your industrial insurance policies. You know, all the so-called final expense, the thousand dollar policy, the $2,000 policy. And I had a little, um, I had a little debit. They called it a debit. And I had a debit in a little area called Maspeth, uh, uh, New York. And, and it was, uh, uh, predominantly a uh, Polish community. Okay. So a little bar there and everything. So you would, You'd work your way out, you'd work your debit, and you'd try to get people to refer you to other people, but you'd use the crisscross directory, and you'd have to set appointments, and the whole idea was to set appointments so your manager would go out with you and make the sales for you, right? Okay? Added to that is if you were there long enough, now when you're a newbie, you didn't get this, but if you're there long enough, you got a, uh, you got a, a postal um, you got a postal account so that you could send some letters, so you could send 100 letters a week, Okay? That time, it's hard to remember, but it could have been three or four, three to five cents for a stamp. Okay, so you got a hundred of these. So I, I you know, uh, you, you had like thirty cents, right? You know, you had like a thirty dollar, you know, little advantage. You could mail letters. So you mail you mail the letters. You get the follow up, and you would go through all that. So that was the technology of my time, and that technology did not shift or alter until maybe into the 1990s, okay, before the internet came along and, and you get some internet leads and some of that kind of stuff going on. Now, even from the 90s till today, it's, it's dramatically different. So the opportunity, my point here is to become a specialist is you don't have to work hard anymore to do it. During my time, it took time. You, you just couldn't go out there unless you had big dollars and you could advertise in a newspaper and say, hey, look at me. But today's world, for pennies, literally pennies, you don't have to buy leads, you don't have to do all of this, literally pennies in social media, you can create an image of a specialist. And you should. And we're teaching you that. And then you create the image of an authority because once you're an authority, you're getting people from the people who you've already helped. And again, what are you going to specialize in? Well, we're going to talk about that next module. I'm going to show you different business verticals where you can specialize at the same time. But in making people understand your authority, what you do is help people become financially independent. It shouldn't be more complex than that. You don't have to get deeper than that. What do you do? I help people become financially independent. Are you interested? My motto is your best interest is my only concern. So my work with you is simply this, to help you become financially independent. Everything we discuss, everything we do is with one goal in mind, your financial independence. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's not about a product. It's not about a service. It's about you becoming financially independent. You getting what you want in life. You helping your family get what they need in life. You being positioned so that you can do what you want, go where you want, be who you want and have everything you want in life by becoming financially independent. And yes, you can do it. Doesn't make a difference who you are, where you are, or what you do. Okay, so again, that's module four. I hope that's been beneficial for everybody. I look forward to speaking to you real soon. As usual, you know this integrated uh, video. Uh, and the uh, Enfuse video is something you should be using in your own practice too. I can show you how to do that. You get on Enfuse with us and you can make your own videos. Uh, it's all part of being a specialist and being an authority is the fact that you should be doing these same kind of video outreaches that I do with you. You should be doing it with your clients and other people. Okay. You have a wonderful day. Stay on it. Be busy and specialize. Remember, you are a professional. You are a specialist. You are a financial concierge who helps people become financially independent. Have a great day. Thanks for your time. and. Uh, See you soon.